How's the chocolate bunny yesterday? I had a chocolate bunny. Yeah. Dude, you had a chocolate bunny. Bro, I, I had a chocolate bunny with peanut butter in it. The you Reese's. Fuck it, oh, I'm gonna okay. eat one right now. Okay. Bro, so good. Currently eating a chocolate bunny. You are? <laughs> Welcome back to Music Muse rated 5 stars on Spotify by Gao, the arsonist. I'm Ethan and this is my co-host Max. And in today's up, episode, we're back with one of the underground's greatest scuba diver. What's going on, bro? Bam, bam. bam. I'm doing great, bro. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That's good to hear, man. Oh, man. Oh, How's Easter? It was crazy. Uh, chocolate bunnies, of course. Got uh, some yes. Uh... Made a couple beats. Just a good Easter, you know? Good little good little thing. Uh, you know, all my brothers in Christ, amen. Jesus is risen type of thing, right? Pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it, in all seriousness, it was crazy. I liked it. Easter's dope. Oh, yeah. It is. We got to love Easter, of course. Oh, yeah. What'd you do for Easter, Ethan? I don't know. I kind of just, like, chilled. Nice. But that's pretty much it. I don't know. I lost in poker to my family, so. Oh, so that's, that's tough. Fun. How much did you lose? Like only like ten dollars. It wasn't that bad. Oh, you that's easy. We weren't betting like easy. thousands of dollars, bro. <laughs> All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the questions here. Yeah, let's get straight into this. So, give us your what and your why. What are you doing with your music and why? Oh, okay. What am I doing with music? I want to like every album. I want to have a different sound. I want to have, I, I want to evolve, right? I want, I don't want to do it like harsh, like, oh, I'm going to make this album. I want to evolve with my sound and naturally just experiment. I want to make weird music, right? I feel like people don't make weird enough music. They need to like be doing some weird stuff because music is meant to be weird. You feel me? I'm not trying to hear the same beat every time. So, you know, anything that sounds a little bit weird is going to be amazing to me. I want people to, you know, maybe get inspired. I don't know. Just, you know, average musician thing. Just make weird music, inspire people. And then, um, uh, what is it? What and why? What I'm doing. And then why I'm doing it is because, like, I said this a while ago on, like, one of my lives that I do to make beats. But it's, like, in, like, 50 years from now, if I'm, like, gone, right? Mm -hmm. The thing that be there is the music. So if there's a chance that I make 40 albums in my lifetime, if I live till like 80 or something and I pump out like an album every year, two years, right? Then that's like 30, 40 albums. If some kid or just, if some kid just finds that discography and they just listen through it and they get inspired or they find their new favorite artist or like the soundtrack for their summer in one of my albums, like that's the best thing possible. You feel me? If I can like inspire people, like even if I'm not really like there, right? If I'm dead or something and just some kid just turns it on, that's like the coolest thing to me. You feel me? It's almost like an immortal sense type of way. Like I get to just kind of share my thoughts and they get to be there forever. So it's cool. It's dope. I like that. Yeah, it's like right. an eternal sort of thing. It's super cool. And um, yeah, as far as like the making weird music goes, like, you know, you got to be able to just make weird shit because everyone loves that. Everyone just loves it. You'll always have someone who's going to love it. So mm. totally yeah, I agree with that. Sure. All right. So, uh, since we've talked, you've like multiplied your growth by like almost a hundred. You went from like 14k to 140k. Uh, so, speak a little to that. How does it make you feel? And uh, like, almost how does it affect your creation now that you're doing it on a bigger scale? Does it make you feel like you need to do things more um, carefully or? Or are you, you know just what? going with creative freedom? You know, I, I really like creative freedom a lot. I guess the main reason I love music. I feel like yeah. it's though, because like, you know, when you see the numbers for so long, it kind of just becomes like, uh, like white noise. You don't really recognize that you actually have an audience, right? Mm -hmm. I remember like, I would have like a spike of growth and I would get like, you know, I have a spike and I'd be like, oh, this is the most I've ever gotten. And now I'm sitting there like regularly, right? And it's like, it yeah. doesn't hit me of gone so far you feel me mm -hmm. but it's like bro like i mean just the, the way that it's like impacting me so far is just i've been grateful you feel me like i'm just grateful that i get to like have an audience you know when people just like 
when I when I'm just like scrolling through TikTok or something, I get tagged in like a video, and it's like, you know, people are like repping Scuba Diver. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the new Scuba Diver album, album of the year type of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, it just makes me feel good. It's like, man, I actually got like an impact on some people. Like, people are doing the things that I do to my favorite artists. Like that, like really hits. You feel me? So yeah. like, I just think overall the mindset has been like, you know, it's it's overall just been great. Like motivation to just go forward because i got so many people that are just waiting there you know what i mean so it's mm-hmm. it's yeah 100 yeah, yeah, it's i don't know it's just been super sick to see you grow right because i mean like we we're here from pretty much the beginning and i don't know we just kind of got to watch this all unfold and it's like yeah. we just we knew from the beginning as soon as we heard your son we were like oh this guy's, <laughs> this guy's gonna go we were off tapped bro. in from day one absolutely <laughs> of course man. Like, oh it's just super sick to see you, you know, doing what you're doing on a larger scale now. It's like you've worked so yeah. hard for it, right? Yeah, man. I'm not. I'm gonna keep working too. Like one thing that I've known is that you cannot get complacent. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Just because you get yeah. like a doesn't mean you can take a day off. Is what I've known. Like I'm, if anything, I'm working harder than I am I've ever have on music right now. Like even after like a really big album rollout type of thing, where people are just you know hitting me up daily, like album of the year like i listen to this like some dude hit me up he's like i listened to this while skiing the other day like i gave it like a nine out of ten like you're crazy right just like these random these moments where you could get complacent like you have to just keep going and like i got some big ideas so i'm excited to unveil that soon maybe you know summer ish i want to try and do some more stuff but yeah yeah work oh yeah of course super Super excited to hear that super excited to hear more scuba diver All right, Ethan, your turn. All right, so how have you found like the reception to Godspeed too, um, in contrast to like stealing traffic cones to be like better or worse? And do you think you've like uh, like evolved throughout this time? Mm, I love this question so much, bro. You got no idea, cause like, like I feel like it's like a, it's like a, I don't even know, like it's it's about my fans, right? And like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, stealing traffic cones. I had a smaller audience, right? I had maybe like, I don't know, 7K people tapping in just like like over time. Not like a spike, but just over time, right? Mm-hmm. And like, I feel like when Still and Traffic Cones dropped, it was good, like people enjoyed the album, but it was more of like a, this is a really good project, bro, you feel me? Like Godspeed 2, when that dropped, I had no idea I'd get so many DMs, like actually t- like saying, just random people who like did not have to DM me. They could just have like listened to the album, said it was good and went on. But they go out of the way and DM me, hey man, this is like literally the album of the year. Like, I creamed my pants when I heard this outro. Like, <laughs> like everything you're doing is like it, absolutely insane. Like, people were putting me on like year end lists. People were like sending me DMs of like their last FM, me being next to like Brock Hampton and Kanye on their like most listened to songs. It was oh, cr- right. That's crazy. It's like the reception has been like great and like amazing just like compared to my other projects and i think it doesn't do with like me evolving my sound too which is what you like we're talking about like you know how have you evolved like i think like i think i really just wanted to push for something like weird on this album and i want to do something that was like really me and like i don't know maybe it's like the fact that like since still in traffic cones i've listened to a lot of new music and pulled a lot of new inspirations mainly being like radiohead right which is kind of unlike for a rap guy, right? Bro, Radiohead, time signatures, ambient stuff, like the chords, like it's just so, it's like devastatingly good, you feel me? So yeah. I was like, that's a big, ins- that was a big inspiration and stuff. And I feel like that kind of mended into my music in a way that like, I really want to keep going forward with like experimenting with atmosphere and tone, which is a lot a lot of what I do on Godspeed. Like all just like the the sounds that you hear in the background and the ambience and like, just like the, the ch- like, cold like outros and interludes right like i just feel like you know i've evolved so much especially like you know still in traffic cones was all like samples like godspeed 2 it's more of like a synth heavy album with like samples accenting it so i definitely think i've evolved in terms of like exactly like what i've like been trying to do which is like make new music make it weird pull from pull from different inspirations but make it my own right just come out with different things so i think just fan reception and like me evolving is just overall been great and i'm excited to see what 
path I go on in five years, to be honest. I have no idea, but we're gonna we're gonna get there and it'll be crazy, you know what I mean? Yeah, no. I'm I'm super excited to be able to like I don't know, like I said, like I said before, just watch it unfold and unfold and unfold and watch you evolve yeah. and evolve and evolve and evolve and just watch it get crazy, honestly. Like Absolutely. It's dope. All right, so for our next question, we're gonna go straight into a little bit of album talk. Uh, how have you dealt with hate comments? Uh, because obviously you've seen a ton of support over the past little while, but also yep. a ton of hate. Exactly. I think the main the main thing is like, I'm not gonna lie, like if I see a hate comment, like this is probably human nature, but it like does get to you. Most oh, artists, absolutely. Most artists are like, oh, it doesn't bother me. We we stay winning, but like I'm gonna put it right out there bro sometimes i'll see a hate comment and i'll be like like come on man like it'll actually like ruin a moment for me you feel me oh, like yeah. i was gonna <laughs> but like I, I feel like i've like honestly i feel like i've been dealing with it more like from the sense of like i've been looking at more of like the the good stuff and the bad you feel me mm -hmm. now like there are times where like i'll see something and i'll be like well i mean you know he has a point maybe this song it doesn't hit right for him or something right and maybe i'll be like maybe i'll think about it like oh you know, like, oh, I should have done that. But then in the end of the day, it's like, this is literally like the music I've wanted to make. And I still listen to it. And I know a bunch of fans out there are listening to it too. You feel me? So it's like, like at the end of the day, it's like haters or people who hate. I don't like saying haters. It sounds so corny to me. But like people who like hate on you, right? It's like, at the end of the day, it's like, they're not your audience. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And like some, sometimes they'll transition. I know a couple people like actually friends like through like TikTok and the algorithm and stuff who've commented multiple times saying they don't like mess with it right and then like you know i'll be like you know what that's fine bro just you know stick around if you can or something and they'll see a new video and then they'll become a fan like i remember there was a guy hating and then me and my sins came out and then bam he was like bro this is this is crazy like i actually think you're doing something great so it's like it's all about just like not everybody's your target audience and some people just are more vocal about that than others so I've just kind of been learning to like realize, like you know, it doesn't matter. They're not putting any time into it. You might, you won't, you don't have to like put a lot of time in and digesting it. You feel me? But yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's there. But it's like you know, it's whatever. I'm kind of chilling with it more than I was before. You feel me? Yeah, I feel that for sure. Yeah, it's almost something you just really have to cast aside, to be honest. Like it. Yeah, I can definitely see how hate comments would get to you. I mean, we've received maybe like one or two hate comments and no nah, come on we've gotten I mean, more than that man but yeah I it's I mean, usually just the people on tiktok that are like you won't do that you won't oh, do yeah. that <laughs> like, it's so funny because they're so idiotic and so <laughs> opinionated it's not even like legitimate criticism especially if it's like like a promo and it's like you're manifesting right yeah, yeah. exactly you know what how dare you be confident that you're gonna do that in the future bro like, i feel like up. i, I feel like you have confidence in yourself exactly i feel like most of that stems from they they need to put confidence in themselves like mm -hmm. like i don't want to get off topic but like you see like you see somebody like kanye or like tyler the creator they are completely com confident and trailblazing everything they're doing with their work because they know they can do it right mm -hmm. there's an interview mike dean kanye did where it's like um uh like you know they said like the 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 motive of dark fantasy beautiful dark, beautiful dark twisted fantasy was to like make the best album possible like literally just make the best album of all time and to many people they did that you know what i mean so it's like who are you to say that you can't you feel me it's like people don't really really realize you have like the potential until you show it off so when you say you do and you're being honest and of what you actually think about yourself and not being modest to the point where you come off like you know like oh this is okay like you know the song you spent four months on is okay i mean like people gotta understand that like you know exactly like even if you're young or you're just on on a platform where people don't take you as seriously you still have potential and you can still do insane things right and that's mm -hmm. what people have to get um hardwired i think in their brain before they like start coming at you with all these different comments you feel me it's like i don't know but you know it happens yeah, of course definitely and uh like is that sort of like not to be too far-fetched here or anything but your producer tag man now i say what i do right is that sort of a meaning to that like do we have a meaning there there was it was originally i i remember it was a ted talk we listened to in like class in like sophomore year or something 
And I remember like, just like, it was talking about like a lot of stuff. Mainly it was like loneliness and like depression, right? Mm -hmm. But like, I went to that TED talk again, cause I was like, there's kind of like some producer tech material in here, right? She yeah. was doing these weird pauses in her voice. And like, it was like very like, like beat intro cadence, you know what I'm saying? Like it could definitely work for a beat intro. So I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just flip this, I'll check it out. And like, that I say what I do, it just, it hits so perfectly. Cause it's like, it's like, I mean, I say what I do, you know, you know what I'm saying? If I'm gonna yeah. make an album of the year contender, I'll just do it. I'll say it and then I'll do it. Yeah. And it's almost like, like uh, tongue in cheek with like the whole ego thing. Cause it's like, like, yeah, I mean, I could, it could be, I do and I say, like, I do it first. That First of all, it doesn't even hit. Like, it's gotta be, I say what I do. You feel me? Like it has to be, like, it just hits. But like, you know, if it was, I do what I say, I mean, come on. Like, like that doesn't sound badass. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't sound cool. You gotta like, and also it, it doesn't really make sense as like, you know, oh, I do it first and then I, you know, flex that I did it. Like, I feel like you gotta have, be confident in what you're doing before it's even out there because that shows that you're actually confident about it. And like, if you, if you genuinely are confident about like what you can do, like you shouldn't hide that. You feel me? Oh. Well, there's a difference between confidence and arrogance, right? Arrogance is like, oh, I, I am the best. I know I'm the best, right? Versus like, and like saying that out loud versus like saying to yourself, okay, I'm actually, I'm pretty good. I appreciate, like, I like the music that I put out and, you know. Exactly. I think, I think, the, I think the difference between arrogance and like confidence and stuff is like, arrogance is like, if you're not really putting in the work, I, I want to phrase this right, because this is a big conversation, right? Yeah. But like, mm -hmm. I feel like arrogance is if like, you're just saying it, there's no meaning behind it. You're just saying yeah. it to like, get it out there and to just- to Gaslight yourself and gaslight other people. Be like, hey man, like, I'm the best. I like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm literally the best of all time type of thing. Like, th that doesn't really work. You gotta like, I feel like you gotta put in the work and you gotta be working like, like almost tediously to the point where like you, like it, it doesn't really, you know, you might not think it's, it's worth it, right? Mm -hmm. Like. I, if I'm gonna like make a song and it takes me six months to make it, I'm gonna say it's probably like one of my favorite songs because it is. I've worked so long on it. If I release yeah. a and beforehand I say, uh, hey guys, like I think this might be some people's song of the year, right? Like on a promo, like that is a hundred percent, like it could happen. And it's proved right after because people DM me saying it is song of the year for them, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like, I, it's not, I'm using myself as an example, but like if you're doing stuff like that, I don't think it's arrogant. I think it is confidence that just pays off. And then when people see it pay off, they're like, oh, well, like some people they're like, oh, well, it worked for him, good for him. Some people are jealous because they didn't really understand before. And then when it happened and you predict it and like people are like, oh, well, I mean, he was arrogant before. And you know, like now that it's like happened, does it really make a difference? And it's like, I mean, yeah, it does. Cause you're confident enough to do it and then it happens exactly how you intended because you were confident that it was going to happen that way you know what i'm saying and it's like i don't know it's it's a yeah. thin line but it's like there's a really big difference in my opinion you feel me yeah yeah no absolutely yeah yeah so how do you feel about like the community you've sort sort of like built around you um like obviously you've seen the picture of um like there's you and there's ddk and there's gao and there's not nevi and there's everyone and there's the four corners there's the sad the horny the misogyny or whatever so all of that um like you've been included like cl and closely acquainted with all of these artists and uh like yeah. how's it been you know like meeting all of them and like you know doing things with all that community and sort of like almost being looked at as like the centerpiece of all this oh man it's it's honestly it hasn't clicked i feel like I feel like to me, like, I don't want to sound like overly humble because I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I come off pretty egotistical, right? And that's just me. But like, I'm not trying to be overly humble, but like, I don't feel that way. If you, like, I feel like everybody else is like the, the centerpiece. Like, just, just in my personal opinion, right? Because like, I just, maybe it's like, because I'm like in, in the zone, like in my own little bubble, right? Mm -hmm. But some doesn't come off that way, right? But like, it's interesting. I, I, it's just, it's cool being included because like for a long time, I was the guy who like, oh man, wouldn't it be so cool if someone made like a meme about me inside this whole bubble? That'd be so cool. It means I'd fit in, right? And like people do that. And sure, they might label me as the most misogynist person out of ever. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I know like it's probably good fun or something, right? Yeah. And it's just yeah. just cool that they thought of me when making it. You know, at least they thought of me. At least I'm substantial enough to be listed. You feel me? Right. Yeah. And like it's crazy like these artists that i've wanted to work with for a long time but never like had the balls to like dm them and say hey man i have an open for you i hope you like it the bpm is 138 you know like <laughs> yeah like people are like these same guys are coming up to me like hey man heard you're working on this thing i would love to just you know get a chance on it hit me up you know here's my manager that type of thing like it's yeah. it's really crazy and it's not it's like awesome. but yeah it's it's been really great and like you know, I'm glad that people can connect with my music and just like, I'm glad that like, you know, my fan base is, you know, as loyal as they are. Cause I know sometimes I like, come off a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, egotistical, but yeah, I mean, that's good, whatever, I guess we can do. Um, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> it's part of what makes you, you. And uh, that's super new, uh, unique, <laughs> right? Yeah. Wait. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. So um when are we gonna see some scuba diver shows and what are they gonna look like oh man here's okay (laughs) i'm so glad you asked how they're gonna look like because now we just talked about arrogance versus confidence i think this leads into the confidence side i really really want to revolutionize how small shows are because Mm -hmm. think about it you got eight maybe ten sometimes you get like 15 people like just like looking at you while you're performing on these little little mics like these little like amps right it gets so awkward sometimes if you don't have the right control you feel me myself personally i don't see myself as being a completely over the top on stage i'm not gonna jump around i'm like i'm like 270 280 i'm not jumping around sweating the whole time before me myself. <laughs> but like what i wanted to do um is like i want to just make it like a fan like outreach i want it to be like hey man like here's the spot i'm catering food i'll bring like five different like sofas or chairs or something we're gonna have the music on we're gonna perform still right but like it's gonna be like a chill area like i'm talking like sofas on the stage with me with all the wires laid out fans can just come up talk we can just do stuff we sing the music bro just like hang out not hang out i'm not trying to be like the guy on top who's standing on like the, the, the three foot podium, right? Like acting like I'm better than everybody. Like I want to be like in there with them. You feel me? I don't want to be like, I'm better than you. I want to be like, Hey man, like talk to me. You feel me? Like, let's just talk. Yeah. Like, that's what I would love to do because I feel like, like you're an equal kind of thing. Ex- yeah. Especially cause like the, the, like the, especially the early live shows, like they can get so awkward if you don't have the right energy. You feel me? So yeah. I just, being chill about it, being open, like, hey man, this is gonna be a chill thing. I'm not gonna try and go over the top for it not, not to work. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I'm starting yeah. a lot bad about what I'm talking about. I hope that's not bad. But like, cool. uh, <laughs> but like, you know, like I really just want to like do that because like I, I don't know. I feel like it's untapped. And like also, when can we expect it? I have no idea. Like, it'd be dope. I live in a very like, like out of like pocket area from everybody else like ddk these ddk um what's his face like red veil overpaid these people that i know right like they're um, people who are like making it big right they're over on like you know like atlanta side right Mm -hmm. you know i got there's people like shy shy high there's people like you know um tommy richmond joan roy they're over on like la side right oregon side and I'm just like smack dab in the middle. I'm like the plains, bro. I'm seeing corn when I look out my window, like just full on corn, right? So it's like, it, it's like, it would be you cool. Perform for the if, corn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking about like maybe going up to LA for a couple of days in summer, right? I don't know yeah. if anything's gonna come out with that, but like, it'd be dope, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, venture out a bit. Just on like, I don't know, maybe just building a bit more of a community, a fan base, and then like, you know, start revolutionizing how the small concerts go you feel me right yeah that's plan for sure of course i mean and there's always the new york scene as well right there's 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 that entire area it's new york and la man they're like the big Uh, big two yeah you know you got people in new york like haji gaviota and like nature player and people like that you know so there's that whole scene over there (laughs) for sure yeah, New York's kind of New York was kind of like um, a little bit dry for a while, and then it's kind of started to come back a little bit. Yeah, I, I think music-wise, at least. 
Fibio and his drill movement kind of like taking over right now. You feel me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely. But, I mean, thanks. after Pop died, you know, he kind of took over, right? So. Yeah, he was yeah. kind of like Prince, bro. He was just, he was there. Mm -hmm, for sure. All right, so with the next question, here the ultimate, is a question. This is the hardest question. The hardest of all question. Time. All right, so the fans have been wondering, and I need you to think long and hard about this answer, okay? Oh, hard, all um, the fans have wondered: How okay. tall are you in real life? Feet and inches. Feet and inches, baby. All right, I'm standing up. All right. All right. So let me get over here. It's gonna be better if I just go outside the door. Okay. Pros at least eight as tall as the door. <laughs> yeah. So this is me compared to the door. This is a normal door. Um. Anyways, I'm around six foot five, maybe six Jesus six. I have, yeah, I'm a big boy. Like <laughs> I'm like two. I think I weighed myself. I'm like two seventy two. You feel me? Like I'm a big guy. Mm -hmm. But hey, bench and squat. They're doing good, so you know. Oh yeah, how much you bench? How much you bench? What's your bench? I, man, I went to the gym the other day. I benched like, I think my max is like two twenty five, which is not as good as it should be. I feel like I can do more, but my real strength is like legs. Like I feel like legs is like where I prosper. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm losing weight right now though, so I'm not trying to bulk. Like I really yeah, want to get, my, but I'm not trying to bulk and then like stag, like be stagnant, right? Mm -hmm. Like squats where it's at leg press even though nobody does leg press like i love it so much deadlift you know that's like that's my thing too like that's just lifting is like it's fun but i don't like i like to like deadlift like my max or whatever when yeah. i go to the gym and I, or i'm like out with friends or something but like i don't do it as like a normal workout yeah i feel like deadlift is like one of those things that like you can't really do for 10 you gotta do it for no. like something like i feel like it's more of like a power power move not like a rep yeah. thing you feel like, nah, yeah. like, I have never deadlift for reps in my life. Like I'll no. do bench press for reps on leg day and shit, but never a deadlift, bro. And people people will argue with with me about this all day, but it is awful for your lower back. Like just awful. It and even kind of, your upper back. You got like sometimes I'll walk out of the gym and I'll just be like, I'll like die. You feel me? Yeah. I, mean, I felt that. Of course. Oh no. Our trap bar helps me a lot better. Mostly because I'm a big guy. Like I'm tall, right? Mm -hmm. So I got to like go down like all the way. You feel me? So yeah. like, so, because I can just have my arms to my side and I don't have to worry about like having it in front and being awkward and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. like, I mean like, yeah, lower back just kind of hurts, but yeah, you know, whatever. I mean, cause like a lot of people, I don't know. A lot of people like to deadlift conventional a lot of the time, but I personally like, I like to go sumo reverse grip and then it just, it doesn't bother my back. And I don't have to worry about it. I oh guess I've tried to before like I, it's okay, but I'm such like my legs are so long, right? So it's like yeah, it's awkward like it's almost like it doesn't do too much because I'm still tall at the waist So yeah, still... so you're still lifting with your back right? Exactly. So, I don't know, but yeah, See, so... I'm like the perfect height. See, I got, I'm like 5'11", so I can hit that perfectly Yeah yeah. So, oh, yeah, Max, Ethan, you hit your, didn't you hit a max bench today? Well, yeah, I hit 160 max bench today. Hell yeah. Oh, let's <laughs> go. Huh? Gains. Gains. Absolute gains. Absolutely. Max, Max, what's your max? Uh, my max bench? Yeah. As of right now, I'm tied with Scuba at 225. <laughs> it's going to be a race to see who can bench Music Muse ripped cast, bro. Don't even care. <laughs> yeah, we got to. You know what's rock. sad, though? Is I need to, dude, I need to work on my legs because my squat is the exact same as my bench, so. No, I got you. Yeah. I mean, my, my legs squat... are so skinny, bro. I'd like to say my squat is substantially better, but like, like at that point, it's like just bench more like to me. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know, but I, I got to cut first. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to cut for the rest of this year and then I'm going to because I was like a big boy when I was last year. I was like. I think I lost 50 pounds since I last saw you guys, which is kind of crazy. Really? Yeah, wow. right? Like, I've, yeah. I've seen you talk about it sometimes on your TikTok, and I'm just like, wow. It's amazing. Like, you've come a long way, right? So it's, it's super yeah. cool to see that. Hell yeah. I mean, like, I'm not going to say there has been, like, some, like, where, like, the muscle falls off a bit, and, like, you can feel yourself mm -hmm. getting higher on that last rep, you know what yeah. I mean? But, yeah. But, like, so worth it. Like, I feel so much better, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, congrats, bro. Congrats. 
Congrats. Yeah. I've I've like thought about starting the bulk, but um, because I'm still swimming. Like the swim season kind of interferes with that because like if I bulk too much, then I'm gonna get put on too much muscle and then I'm not gonna be like I'm gonna be like tight through the water a little bit. Don't get yeah. as much flexibility, right? So there has to be like a good balance there. Yeah. yeah. Maybe next year I might quit and I might just go for like a full bulk and just go crazy with it. Hell yeah, <laughs> man. Shout out to my one friend though who's going for the uh, deadlift world record. He's sitting at 600 right now. Ooh. Jeez. 600. At 16. At 16. One friend. The, for... the world record for 16 year olds for deadlifting. That's crazy. Yeah, he's, oh my god, he's nuts, man. <laughs> he's crazy. He works out like three times a day. Bro, he's like a madman. I know kids like that, bro. They're like creatine for breakfast. Like, oh, yeah. literally. Pre workout, bro. Every single one of their drinks. That should be like milk and they'll still put pre in it. <laughs> literally bro this guy has like a he'll bring like the uh have you ever seen like the auto mixing cups oh yeah, yeah the one that he he's got one of those bro bring him to the gym bro yeah oh, oh yeah. man what a guy but yeah show to him he's crazy yeah. his bench i think right now is sitting at 300. Yeah. it's crazy and man only weighs like 185 pounds That's Jeez. it's insane man is like just dense <laughs> <laughs> All right, Max. Let's get into some goals. Right, questions sorry, I got, we got a little off topic there. Nah, that's cool. Out. Let's get into some. <laughs> let's get into the goals one. All right, a little bit about goals. Last time we talked about your goals, um, it was to work with Freddie Gibbs and have a stacked discography. Uh, what are you after now, that? Bro, I'm still trying to work with Freddie Gibbs. He needs Hell to yeah. see me. <laughs> like that's the thing. I feel like every beat I put out in some way or another, I can hear Freddie absolutely destroying it. You feel me? Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> absolutely. Everyone it's says like, it. Your comments are filled with it. Bro, like it could be Bronson. Sure, I can make a couple Bron action Bronson beats. I could make a couple Jid beats or J Cole. But Freddie Gibbs, man, get me like a seven track deal with him. I will produce like a crazy ass album for him. Like he doesn't even have to use it, but I'll just it'll just be there for him. You feel me? Like, I feel like I could do some crazy stuff with him. Like, plus, like, I mean, like, I've seen his, like, interviews and, like, his, like, lives and stuff. Like, I feel like it would be, like, it'd be so fun to work with him in the studio. You feel me? Like, it'd be hilarious. Yeah. And, like, bro, you know, like, you like the stuff I'm doing now for, like, other artists that, like, aren't Freddie Gibbs. Imagine if I just got a hold of Freddie Gibbs for a second. I would make literally the best thing possible because, like, my whole career in the future is dependent on making sure that, a Freddie Gibbs album is like a hundred percent masterclass. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's like you would hear like literally the best things I've ever made. You know what I mean? This stuff I'm posting on my TikTok, it's literally nothing compared to what I do for Freddie Gibbs. It's crazy. So like, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's just that, that's my goal though. Freddie Gibbs. I also want to like, I was, I want to be like the um, I want to be like Kanye on his like 2018 grind where he made like five albums. Like I just want to like produce for people. And like just release these like EPs or tapes where it's just produced by me, but it's like unofficial, right? So it's like they don't really know until they hear that I say what I do tag at the beginning, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or like yeah. until they release it on Instagram, like, hey, this is fully produced by Scuba Diver. Like I just, you know, yeah, I just right? like that I <laughs> in the shadows a bit working on my own stuff, but also like helping these artists with like their craft, you feel me? Yeah. So overall it's just yeah, work with Freddie Gibbs, get better, become the best producer of this generation yeah that's it hell yeah hell that's yeah. that is a definite set goal so thank you for that absolutely hell yes absolutely all right so following like almost the same pattern a little bit with this question uh what are we gonna see from you next because we've heard about this ep coming soon and are Ooh. there like any confirmed features we can talk about or anything we should know that hasn't been said already uh ep let's see I'm aiming to get it out like June, mm -hmm. maybe like latest July. Like I want it to be like fresh in the summer, so like people have time to digest it in the summer. Yeah, you know and I mean? like you know, it can be sort of a summer soundtrack type thing. Exactly, that's the, that's the idea. Um, as for cover, I have a cover. It's so good. It's crazy. It's oh, insane. Oh man, oh it's man. So I made it in like ten minutes, and it's the best cover I think I've ever made for any material I've ever released. It's so good. It just speaks so much about like the vibe, and like it's so simple. It, you'll you'll see it when I release it eventually. Um, there's a few names going around, but I don't want to like do anything. There's features though. I want to get um, 
I don't know if anything's confirmed yet, but like I have an idea of who I want. I mean, I want to get the the usuals right. Like you've probably heard on like like Godspeed. I want to get maybe DDK, see what he can do. I want to get just like anybody who can like prove their 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 thing or like their uh, their ability, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, if I if I make a beat, cause I'm making I'm making like three beats a day right now. So if I make like a beat that really hits, and it's like, oh, this could work for, oh shoot, I think my low power mode. Sorry about that. I had low You're power. Good, really. All good. Did it cut out or no? We good? Uh, no, we good. Frozen for like okay. five seconds, but other than that, you're cool. Okay, we're chilling. But yeah, but like, I'm making like three beats a day. So if like if a beat pops up and it's like this could sound really good for let's say you know an overpaid or something, mm-hmm. I'll hit up. I'll hit them up. You know what I mean? I'll I'll hit up. I'll be like, hey man, this 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 open. It's for you if you want it. I made it. You know, it's pretty dope. And we'll see where it goes. You know what I mean? Like I got all the time in the world. It's April. I got May. You know what I'm saying? And then I got like the first half of June to just make beats. That's all I gotta do. I don't even gotta worry about like the, the, the um, like the um, the the vocals, the lyrics, mm-hmm. or to some extent the mixing. Cause I'm really good at mixing beats. Not vocals on top of the beats, but just okay. like beats. Yeah. But like, you know, I don't gotta worry about too much. And like, you know, people can just take their time. So I'm not rushing it. I'm making it literally the best it can possibly be. I'm making sure that I get all the filler beats out of the way. Cause I make if I'm making three beats a day, one of them's gonna hit, and they have like I got two beats already that are just like master class. You feel me? Like it's crazy. So like we're we're doing some crazy stuff, uh, and yeah, it's gonna be a great summer experience for scuba diver fans for real. Hell yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. I'm excited as a certified scuba diver fan. I'm excited. Certified Maybach. scuba diver fan boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. We got the age old question. What is oh, yeah. a funny story or experience you have throughout life, through uh, music, through anything? Man, man, man. Some stupid stuff you've done with friends. I saw always you make, were like, linking with uh, Andrew Snakes a few weeks ago, so. <laughs> Snakes. You know, I would I would talk about something that happened with Andrew Snakes and his friend, but I don't want to expose him because it was kind of private. <laughs> of course, oh, okay. yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Luther podcast, bro. We told you about when I pranked. If I sang logic, you ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So funny. Oh, he was man. so. Oh my god, his face lit up. That's not what I'm talking about, though. I want to talk about this one time. Oh man. So. Oh, perfect. Okay, so every every Thursday, in our hometown, we got a Buffalo Wild Wings, and every Thursday they do this uh, BOGO, buy one get one free, boneless, mm-hmm. right? You got it's got boneless. Oh, so, boneless. Me and my friends, you know. We're like, okay, bet we'll get some we'll get some fire wings for like twelve bucks and we get double, right? You know what I'm saying? So that's the plan. We go there. Um there's a certain waiter there. I don't wanna name names, uh, in case he's watching this, which he's definitely not. But like, you know, in case he does see it, like twenty years down the line, just <laughs> off the recommend. Uh I'll keep him anonymous. I'll call him Jerry. All right. So Jerry, Jerry oh, this yeah. Player named Jerry. He's a fun guy. He's obviously the life of the party in B dubs. You feel me? So we're all he's like one of those very extroverted, like really loud type of guys, right? You could see him being a coach in football. Like he's very out there. So Yeah, of course. <laughs> so he's the waiter for us like almost every time. And he comes up and um he's like, Can we get you boys anything started today? And we got we get like these nachos because there's like free nachos or something, right? Oh, yeah. And like, you know, free nachos, you buy enough wings, which we have, trust me, and we get free nachos. And so we got these free nachos and he brings them out and we're digging through them. It's me and the boys. We're just eating all these nachos. You know, the rule is, do yes. so you feel me? You got to get the dry ones. You got to be humble about it. You can't take the one stack with the jalapeno and the dip and everything. You got to be humble, no. but it's middle. And there's just this little mandarin orange sitting in the middle of the nachos, right? Just chilling there. Just, why is mandarin orange in there? So who put the orange in the nachos? Yeah, exactly. Also, at the same time, we're playing Uno in the B-dubs. So it's like okay. the best thing. So we got this man in orange and we're like, hey, what if we like pretend to make a really big deal out of this so that we get another free nachos? Because it's not that big of a deal. I honestly, we could, I could probably just take the man in orange, put it on a nacho and eat it myself. You feel me? It's not a big of a deal. But like, what if we did? You feel me? Like, what if we made like a, a, a big deal about it? What if we acted like so, we cared? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So 
this is <laughs> and maybe it's just funny to me bro but like the, the the dude comes over he's this big guy he's probably he's probably he's probably my weight a little bit shorter he's a big guy uh he comes over again uh one of our friends is, takes on the honor of doing it he's like hey man uh there's a there's there's a mandarin orange in my nachos is it possible we can get a refund and this dude this dude looks at him and just starts laughing as hard as he can <laughs> thinking the whole world bro oh man <laughs> awesome he, he, like, amazing. <laughs> like i can't do his laugh it was crazy though he had a, he had a, he had a goofy ass laugh <laughs> bro and he's like like he's a like, chad laugh he, yeah he's like nah you're chilling and then he walks off like he doesn't care <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> so, Fucking idiot. That might not be the funniest thing, but like, oh my god, like that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Like it was hilarious, and we were just, we were just, just like, denied. <laughs> hilarious, because he, he wasn't having it. You feel me? He was like, no, this is not a big deal. He I, like, I want to. Who does that? Like, I I want to be there for that. He knew Bro. exactly what you were trying to do too. <laughs> it was so funny. Like he kind of like literally, he kind of knows us. Like we. He gives us receipts, right? And so we write like little notes to him because we know his waiter name because he's kind of like a big deal there. We like oh, write, shit. oh, hey, uh, Jerry, you know, like, uh, we love you. Uh, we love you, Jerry. Like, so, you know, we did almost every time. So it's funny. Some of my shit. <laughs> it's like, my name or something. It's it's stupid. But like, yeah, that's a, that's a funny little little moment there, you know? Absolutely. Nice. It's, that's exactly good. good funny moments with the boys. Yeah. Exactly exactly classic all right so coming down to the big last one here no pressure or anything but this one's usually a good a good one all right so you answered it last time oh. we're gonna give it to you again all right what is a message of inspiration or advice you have for everyone listening right now Dude, we got him with that one we got him listen listen to me. listen You, you guys gotta make weird music. You guys gotta make weird music. You guys, you guys gotta make weird music. That's literally it. Instead of okay, listen. Instead of the hi hat that you always use, go for the tambourine. Okay. Oh, Instead okay. of the snare that you always use, go for a rim shot. Instead of putting a tom fill that you've already used a billion times throughout the song. Make the make the make the kick roll. Do something weird. Mm -hmm. If you got a lead, if you got like a vocal lead or something that sounds a little bit too weird but you're vibing with it, but you're like I don't know if people would really mess with that. Then put it in because that's how you know you struck gold. If you if if you are listening to your song and you're like man that's a bit weird. I don't know if people are going to mess with that, but I do. That's when you know that you got your own sound because that means you're doing something new. You're doing exactly, something new that nobody's right? ever yeah. heard yeah. before. So don't double back on the stuff that makes you uncomfortable because that is where good art is. If you think for a second that Kanye was worried about the mainstream success of Yeezus after not putting four snares or four tracks out snares for the first four tracks, you're dead wrong. He was... Complete, he was probably completely uncomfortable and probably like really scared inside on how the reception would get. But now it is probably one of his most infamous albums and maybe one of the most infamous albums of all time. Plus the Absolutely. cover art slaps. Like I'll just be honest, like that cover art's crazy. But oh, like, come on. yeah. But like, just be weird. That's all I'm gonna say because anybody can come out with the best trap album, right? And then it will it will blend in with the last one from five years ago. You feel me? You need to make something new. Make something creative. Be dope with it. Also, dope album covers, man. Be weird with it. Make some cool album covers. You know, still in traffic. Oh, yeah. I don't even know like what the hell I was on, bro. I put some weird stuff in that album cover, but it's a vinyl. But like, in, but it's yeah. it's cool. Godspeed too, bro. There's like this little corner in the side of it that's just like a window, like a window sill type type thing. Like it's there. I didn't edit it out. There's a little orange face looking at you. You know what I'm saying? Just get weird. That's all you gotta do. So yeah, everybody get weird with your music and you know yeah 
Just get, get weird. weird 2022. Oh, yeah. You're get weird 2022. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Scuba for president 2036 as well. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 2036, Scuba oh. for president. Yo, also, before we end this thing, um, I've seen yeah. like you have all your, uh, your album covers on your wall in your room. Um, I do. Can you, can you go show us real quick? I also saw you have like that one in glass. Like, uh, do you have ACR in glass or whatever? I do, but it's not at my house. It's at my dad's because my dad oh. is actually on the cover. Yeah. So I, I got two copies of the vinyl made, which was extremely expensive and they sucked for their money. So I'm not going to give the website oh. so nobody even thinks about it. Mm -hmm. But like, um, yeah, here's the, the, how do I turn this around? Oh. Oh, there we are. Here's the wall. Uh, we got 91 Genius That Ain't Crazy. We got the three uh, 45s. We got a season. Whoa. Scoop a season. Yeah. Bam. ACR. Traffic cones. STC. Bam. That's what I'm talking about. Godspeed 2 here a little bit later. I got to mm -hmm. figure that out. Of course. But, um, yeah. And then, you know, of course, can't talk about ACR in my house without mentioning. I got, I got the vinyl of it. Is a double oh, vinyl. Yeah. That's so We're sick. Chilling. Got the backside with the whole track list. Pretty dope stuff. Cost way too much, and it kind of sounds like it was recorded on like a Nintendo, but it's there, so it, you know, I can still flex it. Feel me? Hell yeah. Let's oh, go. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's All sweet. right. So I just want to thank you so much for coming on again today. It's been so sick to talk. You know, it's been a little while. That's oh oh. Oh, 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 yo, hold on. Okay. There we go. Nah, bro. I love you guys. For real. It, it's oh, it's no, all we love you. Thanks, we man. love you. Music, yeah, we actually, music we actually, we actually love you more. No, use this for a TikTok, okay? Just get ready. Get ready. All right. Music Muse Podcast. Podcasting and entertainment for the future. This is Scuba Diver approved. If you got a problem with it, you're going to have to beat me up. There we are. That's your TikTok. Hey, there you, you go. There you go. <laughs> We're so using that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh using my that. gosh. Oh, World's man. best cameo for free. Love exactly. you, man. Honestly. I love you guys, bro. You guys are so chill. Oh, thanks, man. We really appreciate that. All right, stick around. We're gonna talk for a little bit after, and I'm gonna run this outro. All right. Yeah. All right. If you guys did enjoy today's episode, please make sure to slap a like on it. Subscribe. We're almost oh, yeah. at 100 subscribers. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're probably at 100 when this episode <laughs> drops already. So, like, common music muse w um follow us on instagram at music muse podcast tiktok at music muse podcast um do it you know make sure to have a good day put a smile on your face and Please. uh plug your socials right now scuba oh uh instagram uh scuba dot dvr uh tiktok you probably know me already i'm really uh frequent on there mm -hmm. uh youtube scuba diver probably spotify you know where to find me Apple Music, same thing. It's Scuba Diver all the way. Scuba Diver for life. Um, Diver and for life. also, um, I don't really got anything, man. Uh, just everybody be happy and smile. Of course. Yes. So, yeah. Guys, smile. Make your day better. Smile right now. Make, we love you guys. You know Come on. We love do you. Something, oh do God. something that makes you happy because we love you guys. And we want to see you smile. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Me do and Max. With your day that makes you smile. Me and Max. We'll see you in the next episode peace guys. guys i love you bye awesome <laughs>